It's time to play that game that everyone loves. What did Matt break now? May have gotten a little too excited about getting this car back out and driving it yesterday and may have broken it. So we're gonna find out. Now that everything's calmed down.
right, so it seems like there's something gone wrong with the OptiSpark on this engine. This is an LT1, and the distributor is on the front of the motor behind the water pump. So I'm gonna go ahead, tear into it, and see what I've done. Guess while I take this car apart, it's a great time to tell you about it. So I bought this car actually eight years ago yesterday. And then after, so that was 20, that was 2015, I bought the car. And then it was a project and you know how projects go, they kind of have ideas and try different things. So after about a year of that, it's 2016. And David Freiberger announced the, uh, Rogue Kill zip tie drags in uh, Tucson, Arizona. And I thought to myself, I'd like to go with that. So I then proceeded. Sorry, right, I'm the radiator drink. I then proceeded over the course of three months to uh, slap this car together. It, uh, has an LT1 and T56 six speed from a 1994 Trans Am. It has a 1985 Corvette C4 suspension, front and rear. Um, the rear suspension was a mistake. I've been fighting that since day one, but hindsight's 2020. So I slapped this car together in true roadkill fashion. Don't get it right, just get it done. And I never, at the time, you know, thought the car would be a one, two, maybe three year car when I put it together. And it was dirt cheap. Like, I paid $1,000 for the, for the shell. Uh, the 85 Corvette, I bought it for $1,000 and I sold $1,200 worth of parts off of it and kept the suspension, wheels, and tires. And then the Trans Am... It was wrecked, I bought it for $900, and then sold about $1,000 worth of stuff off of it, kept the motor transmission. So between buying and selling parts, the original purchase of the car, and some new parts I had to buy, I had like two grand into this car. So this car has taken us a lot of places. It uh, turned out to be way more than I ever thought it would be. The car was very rough when I got it. It had, it's full of Bondo, as you can see from the few little clips I showed you. And uh, driving it in January just expedited the process of it, uh, all the Bondo falling off the rust again. Which is why I found that 59. So that's gonna be our replacement 59. And all the stuff that I've learned about this, I'm doing differently. And we're recreating the very first trip with that car. We're going to what's now called the duct tape drags in Tucson, Arizona in uh, October. So the car won't see any salt, which is great. I get to go do the burnout competition, which I'm excited about. Um, so we can call last night testing to make sure this would hold up for burnouts and it didn't so I'm glad that we found that problem now and not somewhere between here and Arizona so as dumb as that was last night it's actually pretty smart I apologize about my little cricket friend he didn't get the memo that we're filming I can pull the last and water pump. Okay, now we're getting a decent look at our Opti. And here's the four wire connector. Looks good inside there. Come on, I don't give you enough room to pull this out. Gotta take the throttle body off.
want to take the throttle body off, but here we are. Yeah, just for that. Next thing we need to do is pull the harmonic balancer slash crank pulley off. the crank pulley off. It's a really nice two-piece design where the actual hub stays on so you can just pull the pulley off and get to the Opti. Give everything a quick little clean before we pull the Opti off. So looking at it, it looks like the seal might have gone bad. Focus. From oil leaking on it. So I'm going to take it over to the bench and open it up. Let's open this sucker up. Really teeny tiny e-torx. very tight. Oh no. Need a deep one for there. Alright, so I took my socket over to the bench grinder, stay on the drill, and spun it to grind it down. Let's see if she'll fit. Oh yeah, perfect. Looks fine. A little bit of burning on the rotor, but nope. Well, that's not supposed to be uh, off like that. Hey, at least we're finding something. Let's pull the rotor off. Really super tiny Torx to hold that on. Okay. I've never been inside one of these. Focus. That's the reluctor wheel. That's how it knows when to fire. Oh, well, it's time to get cracking. That engine and transmission need to come out and go in there. Well, here it is. The 1959 Dodge with the 85 Corvette suspension. As you can see, the car was pretty patched together when I got it. It's had uh, patches brazed in. That's how long ago it was. And then I've driven it to Arizona twice in January, which uh, didn't help things. So this is why I looked high and low, far and wide for a really clean 59 Dodge. And that's what I found there. So I should be able to sell all this Corvette stuff now, recuperate some money. Fuel tank was starting to leak again. That's uh, been a never ending thing with this car. I'm completely done with this Corvette stuff and I'm looking forward to having a solid axle and the reliability of a solid axle because all my problems with this car were right there. Well, we're uh, going to stop messing around and get this sucker pulled out.
freshen up a little bit what we have in it. Fits just like a glove. Actually, uh, very impressed with how well it fits. So I'll get a uh, large grommet. So I can pop a hole probably down under here. Run the wiring inside for the PCM. And then all this stuff will be inside the car. And I wanna try and keep it as clean looking under here as possible. For the airbags, I think what I'm going to do is run a 3 8 hard line from the back because uh, I'll have all the air management in the trunk up to about here. And then a small chunk of uh, air line to go from the hard line into the elbow and then down into the bag try and make it kind of look cool while keeping it clean. This will be changing a bit over here because I'm putting my steering column out of the other car into this car. I'm uh, not a super big fan of the uh, 1970s to 80s Pontiac steering wheel. Just, uh, it doesn't suit it. But yeah, we're making progress. Engines in, gonna start to clean up. That's gonna do it for today's episode. Uh, we got the engine all set in place. We had a little bit of a setback trying to get the motor to run again after some shenanigans. So a little bit behind, but that's okay. Uh, the engine actually went in really well. Looks really good. I'm super happy with the way it uh, sits in there. Thanks for watching guys and uh, have a good one. And if you liked today's video, Please give me a sub, that'd be great.